Hi, my name is Sylvia. I'm passionate about languages, English in particular. Welcome to my world, world of English. I don't even know where to start because this is the longest we've ever gone without being in touch. This is the longest break that we have ever had. And so what can I say? Well, I missed you. I missed talking to you. I missed recording new episodes. I missed looking for inspiration. So maybe what I'll do right now is I'll just start by saying why I have remained silent for such a long time. So actually the explanation is uh, rather simple because I was absent because of the holidays and I do believe you also took uh, a holiday for yourselves, right? So you went somewhere. By the way, that would be an interesting thing to get some feedback from you and find out where you went on holiday, how you spent this time, if you managed to go abroad perhaps, and if you managed to use your linguistic skills and if you managed to speak some English. So this was one thing, right? This relaxation element, traveling, uh, spending time with family and friends, indulging in some lovely food and lovely drinks. But on the other hand, this summertime was a very hard working for myself. It was very hard working for the whole team here. We had a lot of work, uh, a lot of ideas, um, spent a lot of time thinking about the classes, the meetings. And uh, so that is why there's been such a long break. But I promise with this recording that I'm not going to do it like that anymore. Simply, as I said, because I I missed you. I miss contacting you. I miss thinking about new ideas and making up new stories, as I said, looking for inspiration. And behind this very episode, behind this podcast, there is of course this inspiration and this inspiration came directly from my classes. It has happened a couple of times, as you as you know, and I'll tell you how it all happened. So I'll tell you about this inspiration and what happened, what led me to record this, finally this, this episode. So I introduced in one of my classes, which has happened quite recently, I introduced the expression nursery. And the reaction of the person I was talking to, the reaction of the person I was teaching, working with, was yuck. Oh gee, that's British English. This is so British. Well, that's true, of course. The expression nursery is super British. That's a very, very British uh, expression. What we actually meant in that discussion was uh, nursery school. And of course, there is this uh, the huge difference between nursery schools in Britain and nursery um, schools in America. And of course, when I think about nursery schools, there are actually no nursery schools in America because in America they are called simply kindergartens. So guys, I hope you you will know now. I hope you'll remember that the word nursery school defines the place for little children in Britain and the same kind of place for little children in America is called a kindergarten. The word nursery is very productive uh, because you can use it in various expressions in various situations. So one of them is this nursery school. And I wonder if you know the difference between nursery, so just nursery, and nursery school. So nursery is this place, this institution for very, very small children. And it actually depends on this institution because some nurseries nurseries accept children who are one-year-old, but most of the time, this is what I know, and you know that I am a mother, a mother of a small kid, so that's why I know it. This is first-hand knowledge, first-hand experience. So, as I said, some nurseries accept children who are one-year-old, but other nurseries would rather accept children who are a year and a half. So, nursery, this is the place for very, very small children, and a nursery school is is a place for children that are a bit older. So that would be children who are two and a half years old or three years old. In nurseries or in nursery schools, children can listen to nursery rhymes. And a nursery rhyme is this kind of a poem, a kind of a in an interesting story that you can read to your children. And you know that I'm a huge fan of reading to children. So uh, nursery rhymes are a perfect thing to develop vocabulary, to expand vocabulary of a little kid. Please do not confuse the expression nursery with a nurse. That happens very often. So a nurse 
is this profession. We can have uh, like uh, female nurses, but we can also have male nurses, for, for instance. Um, and th- this is something that I'm also asked about, right? Can we use it like that? Or can we use it only for women? Or can, can we also use it for men? And that is true. We can also use it for men. So this is the introduction kind of thing. So the word nursery was this inspiration, but as I said, it just came up and it led me to a very interesting story and it led me to a very interesting um, thing that I'm going to talk about. Why? Well, because as I finished the class, I went to my son's room and I found a book. You know that I read to him. I told you I'm a fan of reading. I do it every single evening. It's a great thing, really. Some people ask me if I read to him in English or in Polish, and my answer is, well, I read to him in Polish. This is the decision I have made, so we are going to start with with Polish, and when he is big enough, when he speaks his own mother tongue well enough, definitely I will introduce uh, English, and uh, this is how we are going to do it. So I, I don't speak English to him, I speak Polish to him. And as he has these books... Uh, quite a few of them right now, as he has these books on his shelf, I found among them the book entitled My First Nursery Book. And as I'm reading the title to you, this title is exactly in English because the whole book is in English. This book contains four popular stories for children, And these stories are as uh, follows. Who killed Cock Robin, the gingerbread man, three little pigs and the three bears. Anyone who knows the stories, well, they would know instantly that uh, they are these uh, great stories. Most children love them very much. Um, They uh, convey lovely messages. They teach them a lot. But actually, the point of this book is not so much the stories, but the illustrations. This is the book which was illustrated by Franciszka Temerson. I wonder if you have ever heard the name And I would rather venture to say that you haven't because this is the same situation just like the one that happened to Antoine de Paris. I hope you remember the episode about Antoine de Paris. So he was this great hairdresser, very popular. Well, actually, the word popular wouldn't just reveal what that was, actually, because he was this uh, fantastic, this visionary of hairdressing. And he was extremely famous and extremely popular, extremely well known abroad, but not so many people know about him or not so many people have known about him in Poland. And this is exactly the same situation with Franciszka Temerson and Stefan Temerson. They were a married couple. They were visionaries as as well, great artists. Franciszka Temerson illustrated books for children. She mostly illustrated the books that were produced by her husband, but also, and here comes a little bit of a tidbit, she also illustrated books by Jan Brechwa, for instance. To tell you the truth and to present these people in a couple of words that would be actually very, very difficult because they dealt with films, they dealt with illustrations, they published books, they had their own publishing house, Uh, They dealt with music. She was also an academic teacher. When I tell you that they dealt with films, of course, we are not going to think about the films that we know now because the films that they made, that they produced, they were very avant-garde. And the word that I have just introduced, that I have just used is the key word here because what they did, they introduced this uh, movement of avant-garde into art they combined different types of art into one. So that's why it's actually very difficult to to talk about them, to define them, to put them in one drawer, to pigeonhole them and tell you what they actually did or who they actually were. But what they did with this avant-garde movement is that they introduced this avant-garde movement into these pictures or illustrations for children. I encourage you, I recommend having a look at the book. So the book is my first nursery book. The illustrations are amazing. When you look at them, you know instantly that uh, you are looking at a masterpiece because they are for children. So they are fun. They are colorful. They attract their attention. And I can say this is what happens with our son. So when he sees the book, uh, his eyes glow and he's so much interested. He's so much into it. 
So that's why these pictures are absolutely amazing. But on the other hand, you know that it is a piece of art because it is avant-garde, because it is transcendent, because you cannot define the pictures that you're looking at with one single word. They, they were, or she was, because today I'd like to talk about Franciszka Temerson, uh, but actually you cannot talk about her without her husband because they were this, well, today we would call them, they were this power couple. They, they were married, as I said, and they uh, worked together. Um, they produced this visionary uh, art and uh, they were not so much popular in Poland or, or not so much popular until now. And the great thing that is that is happening, of course, if you want to get to know them, what you would have to do, definitely, you would have to need to look at the work, or works, because there are so many of them. So there are these YouTube uh, clips that you can watch uh, on the internet. Uh, there are various pictures uh, there are various publications. So actually, without uh, reading their uh, literary output, without looking at the pictures, admiring their pictures, it is very difficult to uh, to imagine what they did. But I hope that with this recording and with a couple of expressions and, and words, I can paint for you uh, the kind of art that they uh, produced. And the great thing is that they are becoming more and more popular because the moment they are introduced to young generations, uh, they are laughed instantly. They are laughed immediately. So the young generation, the young people in Poland and abroad who find out about them for the first time, they just love them at the very first uh, moment. What is interesting and what is also something uh, that is to me worth remembering is that uh, Franciszka Temerson published the first translation of Ubu Rua. And of course, the translation is one thing, so she introduced the piece to this broader audience. But also what she did, and this is something that is easy to understand, and she was as she was this illustrator, as she loved visual arts, she made it in a beautiful, beautifully uh, visual way because she produced it on yellow paper, so the, the whole uh, thing was on yellow paper, the text was in black, and she embroidered it, in a way, with drawings, with her own drawings. And she enjoyed it so much, I mean, that kind of work, that later on she produced um, a comic strip based on Ubu Rua, and she illustrated this comic book, again, with her own pictures, but the, the comic strip, the, the comic book, as we can call it, it was published or it was put for the greater audience to, to see on very long pieces of paper. They were one meter long and on these one meter long pieces of paper, Franciszka Demerson drew the story. Uh, she illustrated the story with her own uh, pictures. Um, what is uh, interesting is they were both uh, born in Poland, but they emigrated. They emigrated before the war, the Second World War. They lived in France, and when the war broke out, they, they moved to London. Or actually, they were separated for some time, and uh, Franciszka moved to London, but uh, miraculously, they got e united after some time. So they both uh, got united in London, and they kept working in London after the war as well. Mm. Stefan Temerson was uh, born in uh, Płock and he has, I mean, actually they have, because this uh, this is the street that bears the name of the Temerson, so like both of them. And so they have their uh, own street in Płock and there was this great performance, there was this great celebration when uh, when they, uh, I mean, the authorities, authorities of the city, when they decided to uh, to praise them this way, right, to honor them this way, uh, when when they actually uh, gave one of the streets their uh, their name. So there is the Temerson's uh, Street in um, uh, in Płock. And uh, what uh, what I would like you to uh, what what I would like to draw your attention to is uh, this um, um, way they observed the world. And this is something, and then that's why I got so much int interested in their works. Uh, and I do believe that you will be equally interested in their works. So what is very uh, contemporary, I would say, for, for them and for their artistic output, although both of them died in 1988, it is the way they observed the, wor the world. So they had these unique observation skills 
and they had this wonderful feeling of surprise and awe. Awe. I don't know if you know <laughs> the word awe because it sounds a, a bit uh, funny, but if I introduce another word that comes from the word awe, I'm sure you will know what I'm talking about because this other word that uh, I would like to introduce is awesome. So if I say awesome, yeah, everybody knows it, right? Everybody knows that. That's a great thing. But awe is this, is this noun and awe is this feeling, this feeling of interest, this feeling of respect. So they had this, this feeling of surprise and respect for the world, something that we have lost, I would say. So that's why their works are so fresh. They are so full of life. They are so unique. They are so hard to define because they have this, these unique feelings. They manifest these unique feelings. And if you live with this ability to be surprised, to be surprised all the time, it is a great thing, really, because your life will never get um, boring. And they had this uh, very um, strong artistic skills. They kept on working. They were very productive. They were very full of life. And you can see it, really. You can see it with your own eyes. I recommended some sources, right? So I told you that you can turn to these internet sources and have a look at uh, what they did on the internet. But, and this is uh, actually an invitation on my, on my part, I would like you, like all of you, the, the listeners of this podcast, I would like to invite you to Gdańsk because there is an exhibition in Gdańsk, in Łaźnia, where you can look at Franciszka Temerson's work. And uh, the word Łaźnia uh, can be translated as bath house. Please remember the word. Now you know it, how to call it, is the bath uh, house. Uh, but the place I'm talking about is referred to in Polish, so that's why we have to leave it in uh, in Polish. Uh, this exhibition is still open, so if you have time, please uh, go, please um, have a look. And um, again, the feedback that I can get from you is just an amazing thing. So if you have any ideas, if you have any thoughts, if you have any feelings after watching their artistic output. I would like to listen to, to that. I would like to find out about it. You can write to me. You can uh, tell me how you felt. If you had the same kind of impressions, if you have, if you had the same kind of feelings, this, these feelings of freshness, this feeling of uniqueness, this feeling of uh, being surprised all the all the time. But what really struck me, really, in uh, Franciszka's work and uh, why I decided to introduce this person to you and uh, why I decided to talk to you about her is that this great artism and this great art that is usually reserved for adults, it was introduced into the world of children. And this is something that I truly love. So even if you are still very little, you can be introduced to fantastic art, you can be introduced to this visionary way of thinking. And in my way of thinking, the way I see it, it is absolutely wonderful because children from the very beginning, they are in touch with these greatest artistic, with this greatest artistic output. And that kind of experience that they get builds the way of understanding the world and builds their sensitivity for the years to come. And the, the book is a true masterpiece. Even if you're an adult, you want to read it. You want, you want to go through these pictures. But as I said, the main idea was to attract this attention of, of children. And I think, well, I can't say I think, well, I'm sure this is what happened. Franciszka did exactly that. So guys, um, I'm full of, uh, full of energy, full of passion, because uh, we are meeting again. As I said, I promise I will not uh, leave you like that, empty-handed. <laughs> I will keep on, uh, I will keep on uh, reaching you as often as I, as I can. But I hope that this energy, this bubbling energy that I have right now, and this uh, wonderful artistic experience that I'm talking about right now, it is something that will guide you. So please remember, if you have any time, if you are from Gdańsk, you can go and visit the, the place. You can, you can see the exhibition with your own eyes. Just go there and see it. If you are not from Gdańsk, then perhaps you can travel there or you can just have a look at these sources that are available on the internet. Franciszka Temerson, my first nursery book. You know the word nursery. You, you know where the inspiration comes from. So I hope you, you have enjoyed this particular episode, but so much even more. I do hope you will enjoy having a look at uh, the works of these 
two wonderful people, that is Stefan and Franciszka Temerson. So guys, all the best to you. Happy to be with you again. And uh, I will reach you in no time. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>